Hi everyone, I'm Katie Couric here with Dr. John LaPook, who is our resident physician and great guy. And John has actually been on a campaign for several years now to make sure that defibrillators are located in a lot of public places because this is truly a life-saving device. And we're gonna demonstrate for everybody watching how to use one because I think if you don't know, it's pretty intimidating, but when you do know, it's really, it's really simple, right? It's Why is this so important, John? Well, because what kills you when you have a heart attack is not the heart attack itself, but the abnormal rhythm of the heart. So that you suddenly, instead of beating regularly, the, you have a bag of worms that the heart is beating light, and you, blood doesn't get up to the brain, and, and, and you pass out and die. About a hundred, about a million people, more than a million people have a heart attack a year, but only, I mean, it's a lot of people, 300,000 actually have sudden cardiac death. And of those, about half of them have never had any previous history of any heart disease. So it's a big surprise. And an, another amazing statistic is if you use this within a few minutes of the individual collapsing, their chances of survival increase it's, from like zero to 60%, so something better. like that. Nationally, if you go down and nobody's around, about a four to six percent survival rate. If you have CPR, it can go up to about 15%. And with these devices, it can go up to 30, 40%, even higher. Because for every minute of delay after the person goes down where they don't get shocked, your survival goes down 7 to 10 percent. So by 10 minutes, it's really tough to think about long-term survival. And one of the reasons we want to remind people of this is because of our dear friend, my dear friend, and I know you probably had met Tim mm -hmm. on occasion. Tim Russert uh, recently died of a heart attack. Would this have helped him? I know it's hard to say in situations. You know, I always situations. hate to, to be looking backwards and think what could have, would have, could have, should have. Because he fact, had a piece of plaque which really created an embolism, right? Yeah, you know, and that's the misconception also. You know, it was just a tiny, he had a normal stress test, right? So there wasn't a big blockage. It was a tiny piece of fat that was in one of the arteries. That suddenly ruptured. That caused a blood clot. That caused a complete block of that artery. And that part of the heart that was supplied by that artery didn't get enough blood flow. You had death of the muscle cells there and it wasn't that heart attack that's called a heart attack it wasn't that that killed him what killed him was that then that irritation caused an irregular heartbeat ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation and it was the irregular heart rhythm that caused him to go down and have sudden death. Well, I don't want to put you in the uncomfortable position of, of sort of analyzing what happened to Tim, but the bottom line is this can save lives. So let's show people really quickly. Are these in most public places, by the way, John? You know, you and I did, did a demonstration of this about 11 years ago, and that was the first time I think it was, it was shown on national television. At that point, it was just in a few places. And over the last 11 years, you're seeing them in casinos, you're seeing them airports, in airports, I see them. more and more, and they're becoming more and more popular. They're still not out there in enough places and not enough people know about them. For 100% sure, any health club should have one. And by the way, if you, you know, if you have an office and there isn't one there, you know, you should get all the employees together and absolutely insist there is. Demand. Okay. All okay. right. So let's say the person's gone down. Now we're not going over CPR today. Okay. Right. But the first thing that you do, want to just make sure everybody knows when you go down, the first thing to do is call 911 or have right. somebody call 911. Then now, you get this defibrillator. The person's down. And really all you have to remember is hit the on off button. And I mean, it's so easy. So you have this green button here. And before you hit it, you know, the, the, Betsy Nabel, who's the head of the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute today, really wanted me to emphasize that if people aren't, don't know anything about AEDs, they're not trained, but they see somebody go down and they see an AED on the wall, give it a shot. There are good Samaritan laws in 50 states. You're protected. Give it a try. And it is really easy. Okay, so we turn it on, and it basically tells you what to do. Tells you what to do. Remove clothes from patient's chest. I've already done that. I hope that's okay. All right, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, so... When patient's chest is bare, open gray plastic case and look carefully at the pictures on the white adhesive pad. So here's okay, the picture. I'm going to do this pad so people can see it at home. Case. Okay, so... Place pad exactly as shown. So I'm taking this pad. Mm -hmm. Press firmly to bare skin. So I do this right like this, yep. John, right? Sure. Right above her right When the first breast. pad yeah. is in place, right upper chest. peel the second pad. Place pad okay, exactly again. as shown. Is, and it's is right this on exactly? the, yeah, and then it's exactly, you did it exactly Press right. Firmly. It's right like it's on the pad. Press firmly. Clear of patient. Okay, so. Analyzing is, heart Can you rhythm. get hurt if you don't stay clear of patient, by the way? Well, you, no, stay not until you hit the shock button. So it's analyzing. Okay, it's got okay. a computer analyzing in it. Rhythm. It's analyzing all the potentially fatal rhythms. It's saying, does this person shock have advised. a potentially fatal shock rhythm? Shock advised. Clear of patient. Press Go ahead. the flashing orange button now. Shock delivered. I feel like okay. I'm on ER. No, okay. Now let's switch places. Okay, wait, wait, let's listen. It is safe to touch the patient. Hi, Begin how you doing? CPR. Begin okay. CPR. Help with CPR. Press the flashing blue button. Okay, let's press it. Yeah, Why press not? It. What's Place nice is the heel of one hand in the center of the chest 
and between the nipples. Place your other excited. hand on top of the first. Push the chest down firmly two inches. Keep time with the beat. They even give you the beat. So right. So people get excited. Up. They go too quickly, but they yeah. say no. Go slower. Go like it's this. almost like one one press per second, right? Well, you just have to follow. You don't even have to think but about I'm just that. Saying, it's 30 let's and say 2. If somebody yeah. needs to do CPR, it's about. Yeah, it's 30 and 2. 30 compressions for Pinch two breaths. Pinch nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compressions. Now, what's happening is if the person went down and they just fainted, they were perfectly fine, then it would have said no shock advised. Okay. So you don't have to worry about hurting somebody who's down and is, you know, perfectly fine. They just fainted. So basically, given, given the shock, when will we be able to determine if, it, in fact, it jump-started the heart? nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. You can take her home later if you want, John. <laughs> Breathe. Continue with compression. Okay. So what it's doing is it's giving a couple of minutes of CPR following the shock, and then the protocol says get off of the patient at that point, and they'll analyze again. The computer will analyze again, see how did you do with the shock. Okay. So that'll happen in, in uh, maybe another 30 seconds or something. Okay, like that. all right. We well, can we talk. Can, yeah, we can talk. nose, tilt head, and give two full breaths. Breathe. I think the important Breathe. thing to realize Continue is, I mean, it could not be more, you know, understandable. You have a, a, a voice telling you every step right. of the way what to do. And I think most people would feel extremely comfortable taking this defibrillator and using it. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you hate to have, and I've had the very sad conversation with people. Pinch nose. What woulda, coulda, shoulda, if and they had two possibly full had breaths. an AED. Yeah. Breathe. Breathe. Continue with compression. And I should add, you know, people are afraid of hurting somebody. You know, you can't be more dead than dead. And, you know, that sounds cold, but... Can I quote you on that? Yeah, I mean, it's medical, <laughs> yeah. medical analysis, but it's true. I mean, people have very little chance of survival if they go down and they're not helped. If you are defibrillated within four minutes, you've got a nice chance of coming back. Stop CPR. Now it's going to... Stay clear of patient. Okay. Let's figure out if it Analyzing works. heart rhythm. Stay clear of patient. Okay. <laughs> no shock advised. Okay. So that's safe to touch the patient. So no shock if needed, meaning... begin CPR. For help with CPR, press the flashing blue button. So what that just told us is... But it did said, it say she's okay? It said no shock advised. And that means that in this case, probably the rhythm, there's nothing to shock. So the rhythm... So can we this... assume that she's breathing and she's going to be okay? <laughs> Dr. Couric. <laughs> Thank you, you Dr. LeFouk. And it, it really is that, that easy. And in this case, it's just a demo, but in this case, the way it's programmed is you give one shock, it was ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, and it worked. You shock the person back to a normal sinus rhythm. Person will presumably get a pulse and can wake up. And I've seen that happen. Person get a shock, they're out, they're dead. They get a shock, they wake up, and they're talking to you. And it's there might amazing. be, the, the, the machine might call for you to do another shock if, in fact, it, it wasn't it, enough. Right. It'll keep talking you through it. And that's the, that's the thing. It, you know, people come in there, uh, people say in an emergency, first take your own pulse. Yeah. Because you get like that. You get a drug. And that's of why course. it's counting down the beats. Because people tend to go way, way too fast. They're just, they're just flying with the adrenaline. So it calms you down. It talks to you. reminds you. Call 911. Right. I mean, it couldn't be easier. All right. Well, John, thank you for the demonstration. Hopefully, folks watching this yeah. won't be intimidated by when it comes to using this. And as you said, the, it can really save a life. And so. there are courses out there. Everybody should take a CPR course. Everybody, we didn't go over CPR. Everybody should take a CPR course, an AED course. That's these automated external defibrillator. And you can go but, online to our partner in health. Right, webmd.com, right? And, right, and we'll have other websites like the American Heart Association. But I think really we want to point out that, you know, this really, you, you could have like a second grade education and do this. I mean, yeah. anybody could actually get the defibrillator, listen to the instructions, and make it work. Right, this so. is what I meant when I coined the term, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, <laughs> did you coin that term? Oh, you didn't know that? I should have copyrighted that. <laughs>